Hello, today I'd like to talk about carbonate chemistry. I just finished 12 days of field work at Pavilion Lake in British Columbia with a group of other people including astronauts and submersible drivers and a lot of engineers, other geologists, limnologists. Um, and part of that project was looking at how microbial structures grow with the combination of microbial activity and carbonate minerals. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about that carbonate chemistry today. I'm currently visiting my dad and he has this uh, great old slate blackboard um, that I'm going to use. So we have carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and rainwater and those react to form carbonic acids. So we have water plus CO2 forming H2CO3. This uh, chemical species is not very stable and it tends to dissociate very quickly into a proton which produces some acidity and a bicarbonate ion. So if the pH uh, is high enough, this bicarbonate ion can dissociate into uh, the carbonate ion. So we have HCO3 minus can convert back and forth, releasing another proton plus uh, the carbonate ion. Now the pH is of course connected to the activity of the hydrogen atom, so the pH of the water strongly influences how this process um, uh, proceeds and how many of these chemical reactions it goes through. Each one of these dissociation reactions is associated with a chemical constant um, that's been calibrated for pure water. Um, when you go add other ions to water, those um, vary slightly. What I'm going to do is draw a diagram of the proportions of these various uh, species and a as they vary with pH. Okay, so this is called the Bajerum diagram. The y-axis represents um, the fraction of the species of interest and the maximum is 1 and the lower limit um, uh, is 0 um, and then the x-axis represents pH. So there are a couple of uh, key um, tie points. We have uh, pH of about 6.3 and that's where the uh, dissolved carbon dioxide is going to equal the bicarbonate ion and then we have uh, about 10.3, which is where the bicarbonate ion concentration or activity is equivalent to the carbonate ion. So I'll start by drawing those two. Um, at the lower um, limit, almost all of the dissolved carbon dioxide species are in CO2 aqueous. It's CO2 dissolved in the water, not gas. Somewhere way down here is the carbonic acid. It's not actually very abundant, even though it is part of the reaction to go from CO2 to bicarbonate. Okay, so once you get above pH of about 6.3, and this depends in detail on the chemistry of the water, the bicarbonate ion becomes more abundant. So that's the HCO3 minus. And then these go down um, to a lower and lower percent with the respective pH change. At 10.3, the carbonate ion becomes the dominant ion. And the bicarbonate loses it. So this is reacting from the bicarbonate ion to the carbonate ion by losing one proton with something else driving up uh, the pH of the water. So there is a very strong dependence on pH, uh, of, on carbonate chemistry uh, with pH. So that's where I think we'll leave it now, um, except I'd like to say that the calcium ions in water are what react to form the bicarbonate and the carbonate um, to form carbonate minerals, like calcite or aragonite. Thanks for watching.